here we go. So question nine. The matrix D is given by that matrix there. Find the values of A for which D is singular. This is just a little bit of knowledge. We know, don't we, that that, when it says for which D is singular, that's just saying to us, find when the determinant of D equals zero. That's what that means. Okay, that's what we're looking for when it says values for which it's singular. So, let's work on our determinant to start with. The, the matrix <coughs> was 1, 3, 4, 2, A, 3, 0, 1, A. We know that you can do this with any row or column that you like. So in some ways there is a, a logic here, isn't there, to taking the bottom row, because it's a zero there in it, and that makes our calculations a little bit easier. Um, I know that most people won't do that. Most people would just play it safe and go with the top row. So I'll do it with the top row, which would be 1 times A, 3, 1, A, minus 3 times 2, 3, 0, A, plus 4 times 2, A, 0, 1, which gives me A squared minus 3, minus 3 times 2a, minus 0, plus 4 times 2, minus 0. So I've got a squared, minus 3, minus 6a, plus 8, or a squared minus 6a, plus 5, that's my value. Now the question, that's my value of the determinant, isn't it? The question said, find the values of a for which d is singular. So when is the determinant of a equal to zero? If debt d equals zero, I said a there, didn't I, instead of d. But anyway, if the determinant of d is zero, then a squared minus 6a plus 5 is zero. a minus 5, a minus 1. So it's singular if a is 5 and 1. There are the values for which it's singular. Great, six marks. And all we were doing was finding the determinant and solving the quadratic. And it was really nice that lots of you got all six marks. And well done. Now, if that was six marks, the next bit is only four marks. Three simultaneous equations are shown below. For each of the following values of A, determine whether or not there is a unique solution. If a unique solution does not exist, determine whether the equations are consistent or inconsistent. Notice what the question's asking you for and what it's not asking you for. Determine whether or not there is a unique solution. Okay, yes or no answer. Is there a unique solution or not? Not find the unique solution, just is, the, is it there? And then, if and only if the unique solution does not exist, you then need to say whether it's consistent or inconsistent. Right. Of course, we're supposed to recognise, aren't we, that this is related to this matrix. So 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 2, A, 3, 2, A, 3, 0, 1, A. So it is, it's the same expression. If A equals 3, 3 wasn't one of the values that made the, um, the matrix singular. So, if A equals 3... The determinant of D does not equal zero, therefore unique solution exists. Job done. That is the end of part A. Okay, that's all I wanted. Part B, A equals one. If A equals one, aha! That was one of the values on here that made it singular. The determinant of D equals zero. Therefore, no unique solution exists. Okay, that's the first bit that we've done. Now, we now need to do a little bit further digging now because the question did say, if no unique solution exists... Determine whether the equations are consistent or inconsistent. So we need to look at these equations now. The equations were x plus 3y plus 4z is 3. Can I just have a quick word of glucose, please? You can, yes. That's the 
that's on the video, Luke. <laughs> Um, the next one would be 2x plus y plus 3z is 2. And the last equation would be y plus z is 0. Okay, now we need to decide what's going on with these equations. Uh, can, we, can we spot anything? Are they... Do we, do we immediately notice, can we immediately notice if one equation is kind of a, a linear combination of the others? You know, nothing's leaping out at me on, on that one. I'm not, I'm not seeing that if I add these two equations together, I get that one or, or any other arrangement. The, the x is kind of key, isn't it? I'm not seeing that um, doubling that and adding that one gives me that one. It, it doesn't, does it? There's no, there's no way I can... Find these, it's not working out for me. So I'm actually going to try and do some solving of this and see if I can spot that's leading to me, me to believe that there's going to be an inconsistency in here. I need to actually identify this inconsistency, so I need to do a bit more work. Uh, what can I do? I can say that... <coughs> uh, well, hang on, which way, there's lots of ways that you can go about doing this. Which one, what did I do? I call them equations 1, 2, and 3. That was it. I call them 1, 2, and 3. Yes. It kind of makes sense to me, I think, at this point, to eliminate x from the first two equations and then see how that relates to equation 3. So let's try and do that. If I do equation 2... Let's do it the other way around, shall we? Should we do twice equation 1, take, equa take away equation 2? Can you see what we're doing with that? Twice equation 1, take away equation 2, so that's 2x, take away 2x is 0x. 6y, take away y is 5y. 8z, take away 3z is 5z. 6, take away 2 is 4. <coughs> I've got um, y plus z equals 4, which tells me actually also... Uh, 5y plus 5z is 4, so y plus z is 4 over 5. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? I've got my inconsistency. That equation, combining 1 and 2, gives me y plus z is 4 over 5. But, equation 3 says y plus z is equal to 0. There is no way that y plus z can be both 4 over 5 and 0 at the same time. That's inconsistent. There we go. And so I've decided that my equations are inconsistent. And that's it. OK, now be really wary about doing too much in equations. I mean, you know, really seriously, that was... That was me doing this equation, doing this question in less than half a page, and I spaced my work out quite well anyway. You know, I, I, I took a couple of blank lines as I worked through that. So be really careful. Lots of you spent far more time than the four marks allowed to find detailed solutions, and it's not what was asked for. There we go. And that's maths. <laughs>